Hey guys, so this video is going to be very different from what I've been doing in the past. So essentially what I'm doing here is I'm working on my own kind of projects, in this case a 1-6 scale tank that's supposed to be remote controlled and all that. So I figured I'd do kind of a log of my design process. I'm doing it all out of metal, so it might not necessarily be replicable, but hopefully it kind of shows my process. And I am going to be doing 3D printable versions of this stuff. At some point, I just thought metal would be cool for my own personal project. So um, this is sort of my progress on the assembly. Um, this will all get mirrored. It's just kind of for the sake of speed. I didn't put the tracks on the other side so my computer doesn't bog down. But um, all these components have been designed and there's a lot of emphasis put on reducing the um, amount of machining that needs to be done on all these pieces. So I thought I'd talk a little bit about how I did that and show where I'm at on the actual project. So just to get started, um, I'm just going to focus for this, I guess, episode on just one of the wheels because that's what I have actually built so far. So I'll start there. Everything else, um, so the idler wheel back here and the treads and just the body are all kind of work in progress. Haven't made them yet, but hopefully they um, are in a pretty good state. So yeah, I'll get into the wheels. Alrighty, so this is kind of what the... Um, component that I have actually fabricated and I fabricated um, six of them since there's six wheels on the vehicle so I'm going to show that process um, later in the video but I'll just kind of show how the design works and um, sort of what I did. So the big idea um, behind a lot of this is to get as much detail as I can while minimizing features. So as you can see um, these bolts that you know I could have made part of the geometry since they're not really like bolting anything um, you can see I just have a nut on the other side just to hold it in place but um, the idea with the bolts is that you can get them very cheaply and it's much easier to machine just a hole in the plate in the piece so I'll just open this part it's much easier to um, just drill a hole in a thing than it is to make a hexagon on it um, especially with the thin corners so I did that and it's all um, the lighting's not great because I'm doing this. It's all in um, kind of one plane of machining. So you just get a, you could probably do a two axis, well, I guess three axis, but you just set it down on the mill and then just make mill noises as you um, cut all this out, but you don't have to reposition the part or anything to do that. So that was kind of the idea is just reduce how many operations needed to be done. Um, the assumption is of course a CNC, but um, yeah, so that's sort of how I do these wheel sections and then um, back to this so there's two of those um, just mirrored and put in place the, there's no bolts up here because it's on the inside and it doesn't really matter these bolts um, are set up so that they don't interfere with the track teeth that's really important the track teeth go out and um, I've 3d printed a temporary track just to test fit on the wheel and it does indeed um, spin around the wheel without interference which is what I wanted so that's kind of this outer and inner piece here. So now I'll kind of go into what I did for the um, inside. So this is what it's looking like on the inside. Um, pretty simple. There's um, a shaft collar in here that apparently didn't transfer just to hold everything in place. But um, I've got this piece here, which I'll open, open part which is just something you can easily do on a lathe. Um, so pretty simple, um, simple thread, standard thread, um, piece like this. And that just fits through the um, outer wheel. And then there's a spacer that accommodates the um, bolt. Um, second wheel comes in. There's a shaft collar in the middle that locks onto the, the um, hub. And then um, you just bolt the um, two wheel sections together and then the suspension arm just gets bolted directly onto the wheel and what this does is the wheel spins freely about this hub because there's enough clearance so the idea is that you can see there's um, tolerances here and there's some clearance on these sides so this wheel actually spins very freely but it doesn't wobble which is really important so it doesn't like do a side to side motion it just spins around the one axis and then you have suspension arm this spacer is just because I haven't fully figured out the weight of the final thing yet and that's going to determine my um, 
torsion bar, which is how I'm doing the suspension that's going to determine the size of the torsion bar, the diameter. So I have this um, plastic spacer that's just parametric, so I can change that to accommodate whichever torsion bar I end up using, because um, I didn't want to wait to do to test this um, suspension arm, but I did want to um, leave enough so I could just put a 3D printed spacer. So uh, for color reference, um, these are steel bolts, and then I have this 3D printed spacer in the middle, and 3D printed here. Everything else is just um, 6061 T6 aluminum. So I'm going to, um, that's the model. I'll pull up the kind of instruction sheet I've been making and then I'll show the actual piece. All right, so here's sort of the example of um, how I'm doing the instructions for, um, this is for a future part of the project essentially. I'm, I plan to um, potentially sell these um, models um, depending on how well it turns out but um, I've got all these part numbers which are going to um, be well defined and I might even just engrave them on the parts on the insides of the parts to make it really easy and this is sort of an example of what the instructions look like give some idea of how things go together for the wheel the suspension arms literally two pieces so I d didn't bother um, including that in this video but it kind of shows um, how this all works so, so yeah Okay, so this is the um, actual components. So this is the assembled wheel. These are all the pieces that go into it that I mentioned. So the kind of wheel plates uh, for the rims, as I showed in the um, CAD version of the video or portion of the video. It shows how small this stuff really is. These are the like um, hubs. So these just fit like so, zoom in. It's actually not quite perfect, but there you go. So that's how that works. Um, these are the um, spacers between the two panel, like the two wheel sections and uh, the suspension arms have this nice gap for the bolts that fits on to the, um, these pieces here. So it's just slots through, if I can do it with one hand and my lighting's stupid, but whatever. So it slots through into there, and then you bolt it on this side with a nut. So it's my solution. It's probably not the best solution, but it works. And to show that it works, here's the wheel and it just spins really nicely around the um, hub. You can see it's pretty low friction. Um, I put the suspension arms here, so it should be able to do some nice cross country or cross terrain work. So that's kind of the physical stuff, all my fasteners, the light turned back on. It's one of those motion lights. So when I'm standing still here recording stuff, it goes off. And then when I move my camera too much, it goes back on. So apologies for that. Um, I'll try to get better stuff, but I'm a little poor. <laughs> I'm done with my undergrad, but I am a graduate student. So not the most wealthy of people, but wealthy enough to do some goofy stuff with making tanks. Um, so yeah, and these, I, I don't, I forgot if I mentioned, these are also spacers. These just fit um, between the, um, I'll just show on this. So the spacers are located um, kind of in the middle of the screen right now. And they just make sure that there's a nice friction fit between the um, suspension arm and the hub. That way the um, hub doesn't spin independently of the arm. So this bolt doesn't loosen, or this, sorry, it's not bolt, but this nut doesn't get looser when the vehicle's, when the uh, model's driving. You can see it spins pretty nicely. And just for scale, because it's how things are done apparently, you can see that a banana. So not too big, but still pretty cool, I think.